Hey everyone, that's Gary. Today I'm going to do a quick demo on Cubase 8.5 on chord tracks and how to use a chord track on multiple tracks and multiple types of tracks. So I've got a simple project set up. I'm using Helion 5 and I just have a uh, basic piano sound and a basic bass sound. And that's all I've got is these two tracks here. And the piano track, as you can see, is just very basic chords. Just four of the same chord over and over again. It's a C chord. Not that that matters. You can actually use any chord. And the same thing with the bass line. It happens to be in or playing a C, but again, it doesn't matter. And this was all done by um, putting things in with step time. So I didn't have to play anything, actually. And then I have another track here. That is um, A E I O U A E I O U A E I O U. Just me practicing the alphabet. Uh, oh, the syllables. No, not syllables. What are they? Oh, well. <laughs> I can't remember what they're called. Vowels. There they are. They're called vowels. Anyway, that was also approximately a C. So now we've got these tracks uh, set up here. What we're going to do is add a chord track and try to make these tracks a little more interesting. So I'll add a chord track. I'm going to move it to the top just for visibility and also make it bright yellow so you can keep your eye on it. I'm going to add four spots where I'm going to add the chords. Okay. And they're X because there's no quarter sign to them. And then I'm going to choose the first one and I'm going to make it a D. And by default, it's setting up at the D major with a D root. Uh, of course, I could make it a minor and so on. But for this instance, I'm just going to make it a D. Now, we don't hear anything because what I haven't done is I haven't said, what am I going to use for a monitor for it to hear it? So I'm going to use my Howling and Piano track. Ta da! A D. So now I have that, I can use these arrows to move to the next chord, and I'm going to pick a G, right? And I can also use the arrows on my keyboard to move, which might be a little more convenient, a little faster, right? I'm going to add an A, back to the G, okay. So if I was to um, mute these tracks and just play the chord track, it would sound like this. Well, I got a little glitchy here. I think my uh, recording, uh, video recording uh, software is slowing my system down a bit. Anyway, that's the chord track. Uh, I'm going to turn the piano track back on again, and now if I play them both together, you'll see that they sound terrible because one's playing a C and the other's playing D, G, A, G. So what I can do is I can say, I want this piano track, and a track has to have content in it in order for this to work. And so what I'm going to do is ignore that phone call, and I'm going to turn on follow chord track here, I'm going to set it to chords first. It's going to ask me if I want to follow directly. In this case, I'm going to say, okay, watch what happens to these notes when I do. They change. So let's just listen to this piano track now by itself. You can see that it's playing a, a voicing of D, G, A, G. I'm actually going to change what it plays. I'm going to change this to voicings here, and it's a little bit better. It just... That's more what I want here. That's very nice. Okay, so we're going to leave that. Now, I'm going to do the same thing to the bass. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say, I would like the bass to follow... But we're going to go straight to single voice because it's just a single note. Follow directly, yes. And if I go back to bass, we'll see here that it's actually the single voice it's selected is bass. 
That's actually exactly what we wanted. So if I play these two tracks together now, and I am going to turn off the monitor track uh, here. I'm not going to play anything. Um, if I just play these two tracks here. Oh, OK. Uh, sorry about the crackling again. Not much I can do about that now. Next video, I'll fix it. And then finally, I'm going to come down to the vocal track. And I'm going to do the same thing. Go to chords, say uh, single voice, follow directly. Now you don't you don't see any changes here, but I will before I play it back. Make sure it's set to tenor, <laughs> okay? Uh, so we've got a mono voice, single voice set to tenor, and I'm going to play all three of those tracks. That's pretty cool, right? Now, I can come back to the chord track and I'm going to duplicate the chord track, right? Except what I'm going to do to the second chord track here is I'm going to turn every chord into a minor chord. You're not going to hear it because I have the um, audition track turned off, right? So I did that. So now we've got D minor, G minor, A minor, G minor. And if I play it now, you'll hear the difference in all of the tracks. A E I O U A E I O U A E I O U. I go back to the original. A E I O U A E I O U A E I O U. So I can switch between versions, which is very cool. And of course, I could copy and paste versions out into the song. If I wanted to keep them, uh, that makes it uh, very convenient. So, uh, one more thing here. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this uh, vocal track twice. Right? So, I've got the original, which is in tenor voice. I'm going to change the second one to alto, and I'm going to change the third one to bass. And now, Let's go back to our nice major chords. A E I O U A E I O U A E I O U. That's pretty cool. A E I O U A E I O U A E. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the minor. A E I O U A E I O U. So there you have it. A E I O U. Very powerful. A E I O U. Very powerful chord tracks. Uh, it's there's a lot more to the chord features of Cubase. Um, that's something I'll probably do uh, in a later video. But thanks for watching. Please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if there's anything in particular you'd like to see uh, done in Cubase. Uh, uh, or any feature that you'd like explained, please just leave me a comment. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.